good morning i'm back as in germany to help my child settle for the year she's going to be out there for her placement here from uni and i left this place for less than a week well it's now around about a week because i came the day before i flew out and looking around everything has grown and i thought perfect way to greet and say hello to july i was here to actually plant out some celtus so i've got this and i've got more at home i've got loads it grew really well really easily so i'm planting this out and i've got space to put it in and then and i didn't bring a tripod as usual i just came because we're going out with hubby and our mother-in-law so i thought let me come and do a little bit of planting out and then i'll go home but then i'm looking around i'm like oh everything looks like it's put on a growth spurt and some more than others and i look like i've got potential courgettes coming up the courgettes have suddenly just gone boom and i'm not looking at you because i'm busy looking at what i'm looking at here so i thought let's do a little tour why not hey <laughs> but hope you enjoy okay we will start with a wide expanse look at everything and obviously you can see my corn garden which is that space there is looking absolutely fantastic we've actually got uh swiss chard ready to harvest i can see that the squash i put in there is looking fantastic as well the beans have start have grown taller and they think they're going to be growing up further i can see something i did not leave in my space oh it's a tennis ball so someone had a dog down here and it obviously decided that it was going to i'm tempted to do some covered and wonder down here but i'm worried that the mice will come and pick it so i haven't brought it with me but i'll think about it if i decide to do it i may come back later and do that but let me start at the same spot so that we get used to how the allotment is these are my onions most of which have flowered somewhere shallots didn't do well uh the white onions didn't do well but interestingly enough something i've learned today it is well over the last few days is if i were i to take these off these flowering heads i couldn't take them off before because it was constantly raining then what happens is the onion continues to grow yes it won't be a keeper but it continues to grow and it will get bigger so you look at this one here where I took off the um, the flower head as soon as it started peeking out. And you can actually see that it's a lot bigger. And the other interesting thing about it is it will grow and then it will drop just like the normal onion would. So because of that, I've learned that if this were to happen to me again, yes, I wouldn't be able to keep the onions for long and therefore I'll probably have to chop them up and let them uh freeze them for use later but they can grow when you look here this is another onion where i actually took off the top and you can see it hasn't actually dropped yet it's still continuing to grow so there's a lesson for all of us they will grow bigger it's not necessary for us to pull them out immediately just because they've started flowering just take off the heads and keep looking out for other heads because some some of the ones i took the heads off of produced other ones because they're desperate to flower but what i will do is i'll leave the remaining ones so that i can get some seed and then i'll grow the seed for next year but for these ones i'll leave as they are so onion bed will be empty soon this bed was garlic and onion and we've got a few on brown onions left here and they're doing fine i have no clue what my squash are but i've got squash there and a squash there which are doing absolutely fantastic now where before they were not doing much and now we're going to walk up to the sweet potato section the sweet potato did not survive well i'm grateful in a way despite the fact that it wasn't so good for everyone else that when i was away it was raining consistently in fact today's supposed to be sunny but already the rain is starting up again go figure uh this has been our our summer this year but the sweet potato has put on a tiny little bit of growth so that tells me that it's still hanging on down below and hopefully we'll get something else in there 
that squash that I put in that corner there is doing fine. You're kidding me. Am I going to have to go back to the car? I am, aren't I? Seriously? Let me check the let me check and see. There is no indication that it's supposed to be raining now, and yet it's raining. How ridiculous, eh? I need to have a word with the you know, with the weather and see what's going on. The strawberries, they seem to be the ones that flower the once and then that's it. My ever bearing haven't actually gotten to starting to fruit yet, so they're fine. It was hard for me to distinguish the pine berries which I put in, so I think I ignored them for too long and they ended up not producing. Something I found out from doing a bit of reading whilst I was away is that they need ericaceous soil. So when I mulch them in the winter, I will be putting down some ericaceous soil. And for now, I may actually, I've ordered some iron sulphate, sulphate of iron, and I'm going to water them with the sulphate of iron in the hope that it will actually do what it needs to do for them and give me a much better harvest next year. Uh, I've also had a lot of slugs going for them. Uh, I, we removed all the sections that were harboring slugs, except that now, because we moved something here, there are slugs around here. They like to hide in there. And you see there's one just there. Okay, so that is the strawberry bed. It looks nice. I'm looking from here. So here I've got uh I've got I've forgotten what peony, which has not flowered. I don't know why it has not flowered. It's lived in there for this is its second year. The first year it barely grew. This year it's flowered. It hasn't flowered, I should say but it's still alive so i've left it there have plans for this section here but for today focus is on i put in some more sweet potatoes uh sweet potato slips in here because uh, i couldn't think what to put in here after i took the garlic out so i put these guys in and they look like they're hanging on and surviving so hopefully these were from the beginning They've grown a bit more, in fact, than when I put them in. In fact, I only put in two and I can see a slip here, which suggests that someone is doing some growing underneath there. Hopefully, I'll get some good produce from this and hopefully we will have the weather that produces that. I mean, go figure now, the sun is back out. Thank you. I do appreciate it. Can you keep that cloud away from me, please? Thank you. I would love some sun. It would help me feel more cheerful. Anyway, back to what we're doing. The peppers have been mullered, and I mean totally and completely mullered. And, but the good thing is, they're survivors. Look at this one, eaten down to the edge, and look what it's doing. It's almost as if this trauma will help it to grow better. God willing, if we get good weather, we may get some peppers, but I'm not too worried if we don't. You win some, you lose some. I think my garden is doing quite fantastic. Despite all the trauma and the struggles that we've had, I still feel like we're doing okay. Uh, we can't expect every season to be perfect. And if we do, then we would not be gardeners because it would be too boring. At least for me, it would be boring if everything worked perfectly every single time, because then there's no problem solving. There's no purpose to the gardening because you just put everything in and it will grow. Where's the fun in that? You need a little bit of challenge, you need some enemies, just as you would in a game, isn't it? I mean, when you play a video game, if you like video games, you want a challenge and if it gets boring and mind-numbing, you'll put it away. So yeah, so this is what we've got now. And I will need to do a bit of weeding because we've had so much rain, so, so much rain. But let's get back to the tour now. My asparagus bed is doing fantastic. Within it, I put some beans and only a few have survived. I can see some weeds. Like this one here is a bindweed, I'm sure of that. So it can come out, just lay there. And on the edge, this can come out and lay down there. You know, a bit like, oh, there we go. Just chop them down so they die off there. But it's doing fine. I mulched it quite well, so... Hopefully, in a few years, we will have nice, nice asparagus. Although, I may not get to eat it. With what's going on with plants and all that. Courgette and corn 
bed, maize bed. So the maize is doing fine, other than the bindweed that thinks that it can piggyback itself onto here. So we need to pull it out. And there are a few of them. And get rid of them. That's it. So these guys are doing lovely. This is maize from Uganda. And my mother-in-law is saying what I should be doing is piling it up again. Because as it gets windy, I should be earthing it up, I should say. Because as it gets windy, it will, uh, it might fall over. But I'm hoping that it won't get windy and that we will do okay. I've got some baby courgettes which have not been fertilized yet. Uh, I see the beginnings of male flowers. I'm not worried about it because this is how it begins. It begins with, uh, it's almost better not to have any fruit on the bottom half of your courgette. So it begins with either females or males only. And then as time goes on, you start to get the fertile fruit. So for me, this is absolutely fine. I love courgettes because they're so easy to grow. And this bed is doing really well. Okay, let's go down here and start on the right side, depending on which way you're looking. I really do need to weed because that creeping buttercup over there is bugging me. Right, at the front, we got maize throughout. And my plan is to just put a little bit of chicken manure, dig little furrows in between the, the maize and uh, put in a bit of chicken manure and bury it. Uh, it's doing fine. Some of them are on the other side where I was, are starting to produce a second uh, shoot of maize. In fact, some of them are going to have three or four. How fascinating. Uh, tri twins and triplet maize is what I've got. And then as I'll say here, my organic uh, slug pellets have actually worked because my beans are still doing fine. So I'll need to make sure I put some more down before I go because I can see a few trails which uh, don't quite make it to the beans before the babies are gone. So I can't see any slugs, but I can see where they've tried to uh, come and start attacking my plants and it has not worked so I am going to do some more cover protection so that my beans can actually grow and once they start to creep up then I won't worry so much because the bottom half of them can be eaten if needs be okay we leave that and we go up to this bed which is my peanut bed my peanut bed is doing lovely and it's got a few marigolds which are actually surviving the attacks. I think this is my patty pan and the patty pan so far hasn't done so well. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, chicken manure around, give it a bit of nitrogen so we can have better leaves than that. I, I uh, just as a risk taker, put in a few cauliflower which are constantly being eaten. But my hope and expectation is that once they, st they grow a little bit bigger just like this one here they'll be fine and I also sold some carrots some of which have been eaten but I also have sections where they have survived so we're in a position of you win some you lose some from there we go on to my fantastic corn garden this one you know the beans are supposed to be edible but because I have no clue how and when i mean look at this thing it last time we looked at it it was not so bushy and now it's like <laughs> it's like a mini forest but the tops of these beans are supposed to be edible and it also allows you to uh, get them to grow more and produce more but look at the swiss chard as well i harvested it last weekend and we ate it before I went to, no, before last weekend we ate it. And look at it now. It's like there's almost no space for anything. <laughs> and these beds were quite wide. Look at it. I have to look at it from all angles because now I need to show you that I put some beans in, 
in the top here on the left and then here i put some carrots and the carrots are doing absolutely fantastic which is brilliant because it was an experiment to see whether or not the carrots would grow there uh i don't think the slugs and snails need to come this far up because they've got enough food down there and so the beans are doing i mean the carrots are doing fantastic in there so i should have probably done more rows but those will do i could easily put another row there but we'll see and look we've got a ladybird in there hey hello ladybird hello hiding there we are okay so this one is doing fantastic we've got the leeks down here and my first time growing leeks and they're doing fine as well we've got some swiss chard in between and the swiss chard is doing fine can't complain really this has been a very successful bed on the other side of the corn garden we have a squash plant i have no clue what type of squash it is i'm hoping that it's a bush one it looks like it does run it looks like a green patty pan Ooh, how fantastic i was so worried that all my patty pans had died and now look i've got a green one here and i'm assuming the other one must be a yellow one so they grow as a bush so i'm not too worried it should be fine in there and it's doing fantastic <laughs> brilliant 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 okay i don't want to open this in case there's problems but my broccoli is doing so well let me see if i can actually get you in without opening it up for greater risks hold on this is my broccoli when i left it was so tiny and now it's growing well and on the left you can actually see the savoy leaf cabbage and it's looking good as well so i think we've done well here i am very very happy with how everything in there is growing but i have seen some butterflies around so i'm not willing to risk getting any of them into there which is why I am consistently keeping this covered to protect my babies and make sure no one can get in there to start eating them before I have eaten them. If we go this way, I'm hoping that you can actually see it because there's less net here. It looks good, doesn't it? Oh gosh, it does look good. It's very good. <laughs> Even the savoy leaf, I can see a little bit of a bindweed in there. So the next time I'm down, I'll go in and I'll get rid of it. So what I do is I go in to occasionally and just remove the bindweed. And then that's it. I close it off again. I wish I had all in one net, which can fit it perfectly. But it still works. And it's working well enough that I'm not worried about it. So that's really good. And then we go up and look at the tomatoes. The tomatoes are doing lovely. Some of them are fruiting and creeping. I think this is a honeycomb, which was left over and honeycomb seems to grow very, very crazily profusely. I am not impressed with the flavor of the honeycomb. And I'm sure there are some of you who are probably gasping right now because I say that but honestly the sango beats it hands down so for me I will not be growing a honeycomb ever again because the taste is not as good uh, the other ones the what are they called blight proof tomatoes are growing but they seem to be slow growers and i don't know whether or not they're meant to be shorter because even at home okay maybe not so much though because i think this is the buffalo and it is grown quite a lot i think that might be another honeycomb from the rate at which it's growing uh i know that i had a fantasia and a buffalo i think these may this one may be a fantasia and another one may be a rose crush because they're growing really slowly at home but as you can see, I'm trying the Florida weave this year to see how well I can actually hold up the plants in order that I can let them bush out without them creeping along the ground and risking disease. 
the other thing I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to cut off some of the bottom leaves in order to maintain airflow through and to avoid disease because last year the tomatoes I planted down here all ended up with uh, what's it called blight which is why this year one I changed the location and two I bought the blight proof the blight proof tomatoes in order in the hope that I can actually get some produce from the ground so I think we're doing pretty well at the moment aren't we look at all those tomatoes I've already started harvesting tomatoes at home uh, the beans I put here are being tortured by the slugs and the snails but I didn't put them in with a plan to harvest I just put them in and obviously because I've got uh, what's it called I've got raspberries over here everywhere I look I'm constantly getting little babies trying to creep up where they should not the raspberries are doing fine I'm loving the fact that I've now got a smaller section for harvesting it will be more manageable for me uh, it's also easier for me to get in underneath and get to that bindweed that you see creeping up the plants in order that it, they don't get strangled by it because all I do is I follow it down and then I just kill it off by pulling it out from the bottom and then I leave it to uh, die off on the plant which it doesn't cause any harm we are starting to get uh, some raspberry harvests ready oh my gosh look at that <laughs> my mum in law will wish that she was here because she loves these and she was complaining last time that there was only a tiny little bit of it so let's see ready lovely <laughs> Mm. Yum yum. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't start eating these now. Because once you start, you cannot stop. This one has already been eaten by something. So it goes on the ground. But look, there's one that's perfectly ready in there. Oh, let's get it. Nice. <laughs> So yeah, so we'll be harvesting raspberries soon. And they'll be delicious as usual. <laughs> right, this is me. Oh yeah, let me show you something. This is a tea berry. And the truth is I don't like it. I tried some of the fruit and it wasn't to my liking. It's not amazing, it's not wow. So in the coming season my plan is to remove it and it takes up so much space i mean look at it it's spread so far that i can't i my aim was to be able to go through here so i could keep this area tidy and weed free but as you can see this friend of ours has leaked through so i'll cut it back with a saw and then dig it out when I have time but for now it's a definite no-no for me and then when I've taken it down I'm probably going to put another of these beds I'm tempted actually to put another square foot bed there and another square foot bed here but unfortunately because the ideas in my head about my future which may mean that I might not be here <sighs> It makes me want to cry my garden but it is what it is so yeah because of that i do not want to invest much more in way of money on this space which is sad but it is what it is oh yeah i forgot to show you this little tomato here this tomato was uh being bugged by uh what is it called aphids which were being farmed by the ants but I managed to sort it out. I uh, did a bit of neem. Seems I've done the trick. And now it's growing well. I think it looks like one of the banana-like tomato plants. 
so based on that although i don't know whether it's a banana leg because the tomato block seems to have this pointy little end to it and some of the tomatoes i grew don't have labels anymore so i have no clue what tomato that is but it's looking good okay time for me to get on and plant out my uh ah uh, what are they called saltas this is my first year growing saltus and I don't know how well it will do. I'm thinking that I might put some of them in that area next to the sweet potato and hope that if the sweet potato takes off, it will not take over. And then I could also put them over here. I think I like the idea of putting them there. So maybe they will go there next to the, uh, what's it called? They've got a long growing season to get to what I need them to be. So I might put them next to the beans. I think my new habit when coming to the allotment should be to carry, to be optimistic and carry something. Because look, <laughs> yep, I did not expect this, but these are all harvested because I'm just looking out for the ones that are dropping. I'm giving them all the time they need in the ground to do the best they can. Uh, some of them are shallots I'd even forgotten about, but they're in there. So yeah, so we have a harvest again. And the Celtus is in. I'll be bringing some more down. And I think I'm going to risk putting in some Calvadon Wonder this late in the season. So I've spaced them at least 12 inches apart because they do grow big. And uh, I've got four here and the others are here. I am rather proud of the spacing because this is the first time I'm, I've, I've had such a pristine and well-spaced area. I was actually thinking that maybe I need to space out the beans. When we were planting them, my mum in law was telling me to space them out and I thought they will be mullered by the slug so much so that I did not space them as I should. And now we're overburdened by the amount and it might affect the produce but then saying that i've got a whole lot of manure in there topped with more manure uh well rotted manure plus some compost so the chances that i won't get a good produce from the stuff i put in there is low i love 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 this corn garden if all these could be corn gardens it would be fantastic i just love it i don't know whether it's because it's a raised bed or because it's a corn garden but i can honestly say it gives me joy in every single way you can think of and if you live in uh, uh, anywhere where the soil is not good this is a nice and easy way or you don't have much space this is a nice and easy way to create a garden that would then work for you uh, in a fantastic way giving you so much produce so yeah so I'm going to put down some more pellets because the rain has washed most of them away and then I'm going to go home. Actually, no, if it starts raining, I'll go, but I want to put some uh, manure into the, this bed here to see whether or not I can actually help these babies along and the patty pan needed some uh, manure. Planting some beans because it's overcrowded over there. And so these are the beans I'm transplanting. And I just thought, let me show you the night where the nodules are, where the nitrogen fixing bacteria live. It took me back to my primary school days when I was still in Uganda. It kind of makes me smile because it's a nice memory of childhood. <laughs> Sometimes life can be tough And you feel like you just had enough When you're thinking everything is gone wrong Just remember that I From the ground, let you know that I'm always around. 
Cause I know we can make it Yes, we can make it If we try Keep on trying You got it I believe